Alrighty folks, this is Lurch from Ireland Gaming and welcome back to From the Depths. I'm back in the Vehicle Designer and I'm still playing with the Advanced Custom Cannons. You might have seen from the little intro video that I have made something a little bit silly. We've covered all the basics and I figured it's time to do something a little bit more fun. So, I have made and designed from paper first actually, and I'm going to walk you through how to actually build one of these, a 3000 round per minute minigun. It is silly. It is just oh so silly. Well, let's see if I can control here. Uh, yeah. And it's also pretty loud. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy. Um, uh, it has a whopping total of like 65. I think there's actually 68 auto loaders on it. But I'm going to walk through just exactly how you go about building one of these. So the very first thing that you want to do when you're designing something, or any cannon really, is start at the shell. So we'll go over here to our crazy ass shell construction area, and I have a dinky little shell set up. Now you can use different ones, but the reason that you'd want to design your shell first is because different shell stats change these stats down here. Now, we want to set a couple of things in, sort of, a couple of design principles down first. We want a small shell for a low reload time, which is here. We want a low gauge, because we'll be using a multi-barrel, and we have it set to 0 0.06. That's very good. We want lots of gunpowder, because we're going to be using a sabo head, and uh, the speed of the shell dictates your armor piercing value as well. And, like I said, the sabo head, uh, these give a... Uh, see if I can find it here, an armor piercing modifier, and I think these are multipliers, these are multipliers, so that's five times the armor piercing value, and it also gives a big speed modifier, so if I stick, uh, we'll see the expected muzzle velocity down here, 679, if I stick a shape charge head with a speed modifier of 1 on, 3.7, so sabo so heads can really speed up your shells. And I've actually used these on high explosive shells just to speed them up, and uh, they can be very effective when combined with something like a penetration fuse. But we're not going to go into that here. We're going to stick very strictly to what we have set up. So the important design stats that you want to consider for this shell, and with a 0 0.06 diameter barrel, is the length of the shell rack needed. It's one meter. Easy peasy. We also need to worry about the propellant burn which is 2.9 meters, it's a tiny little 3 meter barrel, that's easy peasy. Now, expected reload time, here's an important stat to work with, is 1.3. Now, we also need to consider the cooldown time, and this will come into play right now. Now, these three values, or these four values, give us all the design specs that we need to aim for whenever we're building a cannon, and this can apply to more or less any cannon that you want to build. So, to work out your or how many auto loaders you're going to need whenever you're building the cannon we need to consider the reload time and the cooldown time now we can't just work these out from here we want to use six barrels to increase your refire rate as much as possible so we have to divide this number by six um, so our cooldown time is now 0 0.12 divided by six which is 0 0.0 two seconds. That's really, 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 really fast. It's awesome. Uh, so this is the cooldown that we need to consider when we're working out how many auto loaders we need. Um, now, to get the actual number, we have to um, take this reload time, which is 1.3, and then divide it by our new cooldown time, which is not 0.12, it's 0.02. Now this gives us the number of autoloaders we need at 1.3 divided by 0 0.02, which is 65. Holy crap, that's a lot of autoloaders. But at least they're only 1 meter racks. Now if you were bolting that onto like 2 meter racks using a larger gauge shell or something like that, that could be quite, quite a big build. So now we actually have all the information we need to build our ridiculous 3000 RPM minigun. So we have six barrels is what we're aiming for with a gauge of 0 0.06. We have a three meter barrel which is nice and easy. We'll maybe make that a little bit longer 
and just to improve the accuracy to taste I think I have about six meter on that one and one thing to remember with your barrel I believe the mantlet actually con counts as a one meter off barrel whenever you're considered propellant burn so we could actually get away with just two barrel segments here and finally we need 65 one meter autoloaders in total to get the reload rate that we want so that we're constantly feeding into the chambers and that's basically all we need to work out so the only thing that matters at this stage is bolting the whole thing together and watching the world burn. So, let's move on. Right, now that we have all of our design parameters set, this is a, per a pretty simple process actually putting the, cam uh, the cannon together. Um, one slight problem that I've run into in the past is working out your multi-barrel cannon and getting the gauge that you want. So, this is how you work out how, or how to get a, like a six-barrel at a 0 0.02 gauge or a 0 0.6 gauge. So the first thing you want to do is have your uh, firing pin, your mantlet and a barrel segment or at least one barrel segment constructed just so you can have a look and you want to set that to six barrels. Now this shows you, oh, I'm going to have to turn the UI on for this, this shows you your shell diameter which is 0 0.018 but that's too low. We want 0 0.06 so the next thing you want to do is take some gauge increases and add enough that your shell diameter goes above 0 0.06. Now we're at 0.53 there, that's not enough, so we're going to have to go one more. Now we have 0 0.709. That's good, but it's too big. So next, we need to go into the Q menu and change our new desired shell gauge. Nick added this in the last dev test. It is really, really useful for this sort of thing. And you want to start sliding this down until you can start seeing the barrel there you go. You see the barrel starts to shrink there? And then rising and small again. Um, now in this case I know for a fact that I need a setting of, I believe, 20 will get me the exact one that I want. There we are, 0 0.06. But say, say we don't know that. Um, so once you get to this, uh, you can start seeing it moving. You can just adjust this a little bit at a time. Q out, check your uh, shell diameter, it's 5.9. Scroll this up a little bit. We're at 0 0.5982. Whoops. It's, uh, and then eventually you can find the exact one. So y your best bet is to get kind of close and then sort of manipulate this desired shell gauge size to, you know, um, to get it right. Um, and this will give us our 0 0.06 shell gauge size. It's a little bit finicky. I'm sure there's actually like a mathematical way to work this out, but I don't know it. Uh, could because, I mean, the default barrel size here is like 0.2, and um, I'm not sure how that equates to 0 0.06. But if anyone knows a, a, an easier trick of actually figuring this out, please let me know in the comments. Would really appreciate it. But now we have to build our cannon. So I'm going to do a quick speedy up bit to put this thing together. I'll talk to you guys in a second. six auto loaders just a little bit more because I was using a prefab and I moved a couple of bits around since the montage just to sort of tidy it up a little bit it's honestly it's not not, not a pretty beast but it does the trick um, I did also forget to add an ammo router which I tucked in there finally we need to configure our firing delay which is our minimum cooldown time and configure our ammo outputs now the minimum cooldown time obviously is 0 0.02 which is the one we worked out and the one we worked off whenever we were making our we're designing our cannon so we'll do that and we can configure our controller parts or my our ammo inputs and click assign all and boom 
all of those, what, 132 or so? Yeah. That's a couple. Um, this monstrosity requires a serious infrastructure to keep firing. Um, you see it here, this thing actually extends under the water as well, with another bunch down here. Um, I haven't scienced the ammo consumption much yet, but the sheer quantity of blocks it needs is just pretty immense. Um, it is actually, however, quite powerful. We can just cut stuff in half. Now this is five lines thick and it's just cutting through all five. Um, ah, there it goes, all five of them falling off. Very, very nice. Now, it is far from the most efficient build in the world. And honestly, it's probably not very practical because of the massive infrastructure requirement. Um, but it does show just how easily we can actually design a stupid powerful gun if we do a little bit of planning first. There wasn't a huge amount of math involved there. You can use this same design theory to put together basically any type of cannon, maybe excluding real guns. There's a little bit of extra math there and it hasn't been sort of set in stone as to how it's all going to work. Um, you can also use, I mean, you can change your shell types to and plug them just straight back into this gun. But bear in mind that whenever you're configuring your shell type values, they they can change your reload time and stuff like that based on the parts that you're using. So you have to be careful there that you don't make too many changes sort of outside the parameters of tweaking your gun. Um, well, you can use uh, maybe, I don't know, high explosive squash rounds in this minigun that just strips armor off. Or maybe fire a longer shell with more powder charges so it is like a high AP Q switch laser or something like that. Ah, so many toys, so little time. Let's just grab this little bugger. We'll save it as a prefab, and where we are. Save sub object. I'll save over my other one, just because I don't need it anymore. It's basically identical to this. We'll nip this off here, and let's put one down on the other side here. Just I have an AI set up here for testing already. And we will grab this, and this, and this. Boom! Nice and in place, and you should be loading up nicely. Just need to configure these. Controllers assigned to all. Right. Now, I'm going to hop out of there, and let's shoot something. Now, I have discovered that this ridiculous little thing can put out some serious hurt. Um, it can cut a lot of things <laughs> in half. It's also very loud. <laughs> uh, my previous attempt had a higher, uh, it had a longer barrel so there wasn't as much spread and it worked very much like a laser. But look, that, that's a moray. Um, and it's just getting absolutely gutted and no time flat. But I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope those tricks for actually designing your own cannons were in some way useful. Um, any likes, subs, or comments are really awesome. I love hearing from you guys. I read every single comment. Um, as always, take it handy, and have a bloody good day.